we'll just make sure the stream will validate because sometimes it'll give you an error message nine times out of ten it's not it's not really having a problem okay. it's just you have to try you have to do it like two times oh look at that looks like it went through Um, audio, here we go, great. So recording, uh, or microphone, whatever you want to call it, is not the greatest. Okay. But with this space, you should be fine. Um, and then just one very random question, I guess this just happened to us. Do you have anything in the presentation that's like copyrighted music? No. Okay. This, uh, no, either, uh, neither one, uh, so we have two today. This one is all internal. There are some links to some websites, but all I do is hover over okay. the URL. Um, the one this afternoon, I have one news report, uh, one news article. Okay, that should be fine. Should, that should be, okay. be fine. Yeah, it's just that if there's audio that can yep. anyway be copyrighted, okay. YouTube will actually, it's amazing how, how fast it's gotten. They grab it in real time while it's streaming. And I, they're actually, I guess they're putting it through some kind of like copyright filter, filter and they, they will c c like cut you off wow. as soon as they hear you. We did it at the last uh, diversity luncheon. We had some Korean pop music playing and, and like just when people <laughs> were walking in and I had started the live stream and they actually shut us down before it even started. Really? I was like, wow, didn't think that one But So I what I would say. So anywhere, I don't really like, I'm not that person that has to be on the screen while I'm talking. But if I'm talking now, can you see if that's loud enough the way I'm talking now? Yeah, I can do it, check. Let me, yeah, I just got a next door. If you don't have to do anything up here, so if you think it's going to be fine, that's fine. Don't well, let's just check. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to make sure. mind sitting over here and telling people to be careful when they come by? Would that be something you'd be sure. do for me? And Maureen, you need to put this up here or you gonna take it with you? I can do that. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, if you don't mind, then that way uh, Safe. Safe, and then your back of your head will be in every single shot. Uh -huh. You're actually gonna video it? Oh, great. How about I sit on this side then? that way?
Yes, the biggest pain in the butt, but the greatest thing, because you have these huge poles. Yeah. So we'll put this up and then I'll close this. Oh, that's going to be way better. Great. Good teamwork. Your next. I want to zoom, zoom it out so it gets to the top of the screen. Then maybe, can we tilt the whole thing just so it aims a little oh, bit higher? Oh, I might have accidentally zoomed it. Oh no, we're at standstill, okay. Um, can we tilt it? So that it's up? Just a little yeah, bit more. absolutely. This thing's a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. I think I'm just gonna do. I think that'll work fine. Okay. And then that tells me I can beat between the door and the trash can. And this is about as loud as I'll be talking normally, so if that's any better. And if it's still not as good as it should be, then what we'll do. Okay. Because if not, if it wasn't going to work, then I was going to say, let's get together Friday or Monday. And we'll just do them all over again and control the environment. And then that way we would have So if this, this is going to work, I can answer. And actually, I have this one recorded one other, other time, Raul will get it for me over at City Hall. So I have this one recorded there. But I always have bad experience with their projector. Their cameras are like really. streaming now. And then we'll be able to tell all that junk from the beginning until we get started. Oh, we know that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, super. I appreciate you very much for coming over here. And I'll just uh, unplug that thing and I'll take the I'll take the camera and the cord with me when I leave and then I'll bring it back. Now what do I need to do this afternoon if you want to start that again?
So if you make that, that's great. If you don't, it's no big deal. We just want to upload these into that um, school training site we have, so people can get to it. I think I will have a positive. Okay, so I appreciate you. Thank you. Two initials, huh? Yeah, they just GD. I don't know how the, the no middle initial, George. When I joined the Navy, they, they uh, it was pretty happy. My, my birth certificate didn't have a middle name, but my social security card did. So they ended up going with my. Uh, that was the other way around. My social security card didn't have a middle name, but my birth certificate did. So they said, well, we're going to go with your social security. I'm like, okay. So then from then on, have a middle name, even though I'm in my life, driver's license has a middle name, everything has a middle name except for but I, I don't know how my parents got away with it. But I don't know. So they told reason. me, they said the only way to fix it is you got to go to court and change your name. Oh, God. I need to do that. <laughs> so the whole time I was, I didn't have a middle name. That's crazy. I never heard that, George. Well, I don't know how my parents did it because how, how did you get a social security number that's different than your birth certificate? It makes no sense. That I don't know.
$2.2 million is urgent. More than the cost us for the circulating dress coverage. Yes, yeah. that. For circulating dress coverage now, but out October to May. No, we do it on, everybody does it online. And uh, we have, uh, like I said, we've been doing it for 11 years now. We think we might be done this year simply because we have our first grandchild. Oh, yeah, right. So we are, but yeah, yeah. we're empty nesters now. So. Well, maybe a week, you can say, yeah. hey, that's fine. It's no yeah, and it's a, it's a competitive thing. And, uh, you know, for being a bunch of uh, grown ups, we do pretty good. You're competitive? I couldn't imagine. It is. I could not yeah. imagine you being a competitive person. Oh, yeah, I'm extremely competitive. Yes, it's not, but I'm also a chess player, not a checker player. There you go. You can win this one. A strategic. I don't care. <laughs> I'm looking at next week or the week after. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly the way it is. 
We owe nothing to the county. We don't do any other common sense. We don't work for the county. Our only affiliation with the county is to pay our taxes. Stop creating cops. This is the I don't like that answer when we go to something else. Yeah. When the county should reach back to the mayor of, of Gainesville and say, I have this issue I'm dealing with. The mayor should say, We've already vetted that issue. Uh, you're not going to get any more blood on the term that we are unless you'd like to file a lawsuit. Even then, it's not required. No, I don't think the judge would require Mr. Schroeder. And the thing about Mr. Schroeder is, you know, it's, he would cop sue the county. Legal fees, and that's when they would drop their lawsuit. Yeah. As soon as they know, no, we could be, we could potentially pay our lawyer and then have to pay his lawyer. Yeah, and boy, lawyer. that egg would look yeah, right. really bad. Yeah, it's a weak ass people. George, it's just crazy stuff.
make sure you have another cup ready to catch it when it starts going over. I thought I was trying to get the right size. Yeah, it, uh, it's the one left of center. We should have got bigger coffee cups. I'll, I'll get bigger ones next time. Always have less to learn, don't we? <laughs> well, that's how I learned it this morning. <laughs> what was less to learn on cyber security? Get bigger cups. Bigger cups. A bigger insurance policy. Yeah. All I care about is the caffeine. You could have put that in a cup. <laughs> just eat the caffeine. $490,000 so far is what Lake City has paid yeah. to get their stuff back. Yeah. They only had to pay 10% of that. Um, they had really Come on in, ladies. Sign over here for me, please. Sure. How are y'all doing this morning? Good, how are you? Super. Borrow money. Uh, could you I'm trust me? Naval officers are in the PRP program, personal liability program. So you go through that, and I've been polygraphed seven times.
That's right. Yeah. Bowls empty, no candy. <laughs> That's a security risk. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Could be. You didn't see nothing wrong with it. Could be. Typical desk. Good morning, everybody.
started in about two minutes but if you want some coffee or some tea or some snacks please by all means get some what you don't eat we're going to feed all the people that want it It might be more than that little cup, so be ready with a second cup to slide it under here, or you'll spill it all over the top. That's my sister. So they tried it at 6 o'clock, and they swooned about it. Are you ready No, it's my sister. Oh, yeah, that's your safe spot. That's a good idea. They did not know that. So I called the other day and bust. And amazingly, my package showed up by now. So we will go ahead and get started. By all means, get coffee if you want to snack. It doesn't really matter. This will be kind of informal, okay? So if you have questions, I would ask, wait till the end and ask that question because I might answer that question as we go through. By the way, my name is Kurt Self. Um, I work in the IT department. I work in the governance and compliance area. Um, why are we doing this? Well, I'll tell you, about two months ago, Walt was asking us, um, were we reading some of the stories that were popping up in the news? And if you think about places like Atlanta and Baltimore, do we, everybody ever see any of those news things about them getting hacked, uh, cyber attack? Then it started hitting a little closer to home. Stewart, Florida got nailed. Um, so anyway, with those three things, just those three events, I think we were able to track back about $65 million that we either lost or had to pay fix those things. So we decided maybe it was a good idea to start sharing some of this information and, and make some awareness out there. Um, so those were our examples. And before we got a chance to put anything together, Lake City, Florida got hit. Anybody see that in the news yesterday? 
They paid $490,000. They don't quite have back all of the stuff that they lost in that ransomware attack. Riviera Beach, Florida. Again, another Florida location got hit. They've got about a million six so far put into their recovery efforts. Um, Quest Diagnostics, anybody ever had a lab test done in Florida? There's a pretty good chance it went through Quest Diagnostics. They lost a lot of information in an attack. So it's very important that everybody does their part. Now I'll just share with you, um, this week has been a mini Cyber Awareness Week. We're gonna do a month in October. That's the National Cyber Awareness Month where we're gonna have a little bit more organization, some guest speakers come in, and we're gonna to try to get the person from Stewart, Florida that's been heading up their relief efforts just to let us know that pain. Um, you know, a couple years ago, we had an FBI agent come in and talk to us. I don't know how many people were here for that, but we're gonna do those kind of things in October, so beware of that. Um, we do a lot of things behind the scenes. Oh wait, one more thing. This afternoon, there's another one of these classes. It's at one o'clock. It's gonna be different from this one. Okay, so it'll be a little bit different. It'll be about physical security and phone security and different things like that. So if you have a chance, come back. If you've got a coworker that couldn't make it to any of these, invite them to come to this this afternoon because I think it's important that we get the word out. So now where I started about two minutes ago, uh, we do a lot of things in IT to try to keep nefarious things away from you guys. Uh, we have firewalls, we have physical devices, we have software devices and we have stuff set up so we can do a lot of communicating out but we try to block a lot of stuff coming in if you've ever had a program or an application or you needed to have something come in you know we were pretty resistant to opening that up for you um, our purpose or our goal is to make everything safe and a lot of times your comfort or the ease of you doing something is secondary to us being safe so if you've ever experienced that i apologize that for that but i'm not sorry if you think about how many emails you get, if you get 50 emails in your box on a given day, you can bet there's 100 that you have not seen. Because we have about three different levels of spam filtering that's going on to block those things from coming into your inbox, okay? We all know about Barilla, Barilla. we've gotten those email messages. We actually scan it twice before it gets to Barilla. So there's a lot of things that are blocked. We do over a million emails a month legitimately. So there's two million that never make it to you. So all that's going on behind the scenes. What we find is when a big company like Symantec or uh, even Viper and these other companies, when they do studies about attacks that have happened, it all kind of zeroes back to one thing. 71% of the time, one person clicks one link that they shouldn't have. That infects their computer, and their computer is connected to everything else. That's why we don't give you full read and write access across the network, or you would spread that virus across the network. Okay, so that's one of the things that we do to try to block that, 71% of the time. So it's important that we get as much awareness out there for folks on how to recognize these things. That's what we're trying to do this week. So I'm gonna show you this little presentation that was put together by Alan Langford. Alan Langford works in the IT department. He has a CISSP certification. That's one of the highest levels of uh, security certifications you can get in IT. He is out today. I've given this presentation one other time, so I'm not that familiar with it, but I'm gonna try to beat as much information out of it as I can for you, okay? So we'll get started. Any questions before we get started? Wonderful. Um, so the first thing we're gonna uh, do is turn this thing on, so it works. We're gonna talk about pin codes, okay? So a lot of times we talk about passwords and we think about passwords and all that. Your pin code, that's usually a four digit code you use for something. If you have Windows 10 at home, more than likely you have a pin code set up on it instead of a full password. Your ATM card has a pin code. Uh, a lot of different things use pin codes. When you use your uh, fob to get into VPN, there's a pin code. What we found is that the majority of the people out there use one of these pin codes up on the screen. One, two, three, four, 11, almost 11% of the people use that pin code. So as you look up there, just glance real quick and just see if your pin code or a pin code may have that you have used in the past is up there. 
I'm looking for, I see head shaking. That's probably somebody who's really up there to just saying that because they don't want to be looking guilty. Can you want me to tell you what my pen is? Um, I can tell you. My pen, my old pen is up there. Okay? The other thing is real important. We shouldn't use the same pen multiple places. Okay? If somebody finds out your pen or your password, they're then going to start looking for everything they possibly can with your pen and your password to see what they can get into. So that's the pin codes. Uh, we're going to talk about password strength. And I'm not going to explain all of these things to you. You know what we try to make you do. We want you to have an eight digit password, an eight character password. We want a number or a letter in there. We want a capital. We want a symbol of some kind. Why is that? Well, that makes it one of the toughest passwords that you can crack. If somebody was to get your username, get a valid machine on our network and sit there with these hacking tools and try to brute force crack your password, it would take about 120 days if you followed the rules of good password stuff. How often do we make you change your password? Every 90 days. 90 days, right? Every 90 days we make you change your password. That's so it doesn't fit into the 120 day schedule. That's one of the reasons why we do that. It's also a best practice. We can see that by mixing up uh, different words and symbols and letters that we can make that password pretty tough. What we found is that our password guidance over the years has made passwords really hard for us to remember but really easy for computer programs to hack. So that's why we kind of stick with that eight plus one character that we do, our password strength that we do here. The days of black vans pulling up outside of your business and antennas and Boris inside trying to hack your network are just about over. Seldom does that happen anymore. What happens now is social engineering, okay? They get a little bit of information from you over a time period. That little bit of information they use to assume your identity or get into your accounts. Um, this afternoon, we'll talk about some current events and people will share stories, but I'll just give you one little example of that. Um, if I send a million emails out to people saying, click on this link, I'm going to get a couple of people that are going to do that. Very little effort on my part. For $11, I can spin up a server this afternoon. I can make a fake email address. I can get a public record request from the city of Gainesville, get everybody's email address, hit you with this. Somebody's going to click on that. I know they will. Somebody's going to fill in information, and that's all I need to get started is that little piece of information there. So social engineering is the way they do it. A couple weeks ago, my wife got a text message uh, through Facebook Messenger from a coworker. It's an older guy named Gordon. We've known him for years. He retired a couple of years ago. He was asking her very valid questions. How's Kirk? How's the kids? How's work? She answered all these questions. She said, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I just rebuilt my kitchen in my bathroom. Well, that's really great. Yeah, I got this real <laughs> cool loan from CRA. Click here if you want more information. Now, this is an old friend, somebody we've known for quite a while. My wife didn't click it, and we did a little bit of Googling. Google is your friend. Because you can type the first couple of words that a, that a phishing scam has in it, and it'll show you all the different people are, who have sent that or, or all the different ways that that's been bad. We contacted Gordon on the phone. That wasn't him, but his account had been hacked. Somebody got just enough information to get in his Facebook, read all the information about his friends, make a list, and start texting people. So that's just one way that social engineering is out there. He's going to be more profitable doing that than he is trying to brute force uh, into your password. What do they want? What are these people after? They're after a lot of this kind of information. They want to get any account, access to any account you have. If they can't get anything off you, they're going to look at your friends, try to get stuff from your friends, uh, especially if you have a retirement account, you know, a place that you go to and you transfer money from one place to the other. That's what they want to do. Uh, if they get into your email, they've got a list of all your contacts, all your friends. Anybody make notes in their contacts about uh, this is Bob and his wife is Karen or something like that? Well, some people do that. They have all that information whenever they get in there. Or they want to get to your computer. And then if, they can, if you click on a link, they can install something on your computer, and it sits there logging everything you do. 
And as soon as you, you type www something, it starts recording that. Because after you type that, a lot of things, a lot of times, what's the next two things you type? The username and password. So now they have access to that account. You've given them that access by that click earlier. Um, how do they get that access? Send you an email. Call you on the phone, send you that little SMS text. You know, you get these weird texts out of nowhere. They call you on the phone. They usually have some type of identifying some type of problem you have. Your Microsoft is out of date. IRS is out to get you. You have a bill that you didn't pay when you lived in Phoenix five years ago. They've gotten that information. It sounds very valid because they've gotten that information for somewhere else. Now they're doing the execution to get to you. Um, they send you a link to a website. Try to, if you, if you don't have to, never click those links, type it in yourself, okay? Or search, make sure that's the right website for that company. Um, or you click on the link and it downloads spyware and they start recording the stuff that you're typing in so they can go back later. They can run a program on it and gather all the information that starts with www to get out where you've been, what you've been doing. Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, Bank of America was wondering how their employees were doing with cybersecurity. So they hired this company to come in and do a test. And the company came in and they said, you know what, we're not even gonna mess with the cybersecurity stuff, we wanna do this. And so they got an envelope from Bank of America and they addressed it to every single employee. And inside that envelope, they put this form. Very official looking form, it has Bank of America up top. And basically, basically what it says is, we've been hacked. All your information has been released. We want to repopulate that database. Can you please give us this information? And a lot of people, 20% of Bank, of Bank of America employees filled this out and sent it back. So that's not even cyber attack, but it is cyber information that they got to do this. So there's a couple of different ways uh, that this happens, and we're talking about these terms real quick. Phishing, we've all heard the word phishing. Uh, there's a lot of variations of phishing. We're gonna talk about a couple of those. Phishing is when you send out a bulk set of emails to folks to get one or two replies back, to get that information back. So if you get those emails, uh, certainly at work, and also a lot of things we talk about at work can be applied at home, especially if you have kids or older people, parents, grandparents, Share this information with them. Younger kids, older people are two of the biggest targets out there. Okay, so a lot of things we talk about here, we can talk about there. But emails will go out to millions of people to get just a few answers back or a few replies back. A lot of those answers, a lot of those replies, a lot of those live email addresses where people are responding back to go into a database and get sold to other hackers to do that kind of work. Same thing with your phone. We all get these ghost calls, right? We get them all the time. We get these ghost calls. If you answer that call, you've just been flagged as a live person. Your number now makes it up on the list of numbers to be called. So those are something. If you don't know the number, you don't recognize the email that's sent to you, you're not expecting it, it's, if your job allows it, if your lifestyle allows it, delete it. Okay, just get rid of it. Uh, so phishing, mass audience. Look something like this sometimes. Dear customer, this is your bank. We forgot your social security number and your password. Why don't you just send them to us so we can protect your money? Thank you. And a lot of folks say, well, this looks real to me. They got the Bank of America logo. It's got to be Bank of America up top. And that is not the case. So there's a couple of different ways. I don't know how good this shows up out there. I'll just run through these. But there's a couple of different ways you can spot what would possibly be a phishing email. Uh, and part of it is going to be by looking at who it's from and what the real address is. If the reply to address is different from the address that got sent to you, then there's a good chance that, that is not a good email. That is a bad email. Also, if we take a look at the uh, link, and I think if I do this, it might help out. Okay, not on this one. If we take a look at that uh, domain, um, well, it looks like dlut.edu.cn, I think that's a, maybe a Canadian uh, a URL. But anyway, that's probably not the one from this company that I was expecting it from. The subject, <laughs> webmail quota alert. 
Okay, you should never get another email from the city of Gainesville saying you're reaching your limit on your <laughs> email. We've upped that 500 times what it was before. So you should never get one of those again. You should never probably ever get a webmail quota alert. It's huge, the amount of webmail space that you get out there. So there's another clue there. Um, poor grammar or overuse of capitalization. Okay, that's another way of doing it. A lot of these hacking attempts come from other countries and they may not have the grasp on the language that we use. Um, a lot of these come from Eastern Bloc countries. Um, you know, during the Cold War, a lot of folks we had over there, they had a lot of jobs and stuff. Since then, now a lot of people are unemployed and for the longest time, it seemed like every attack that we got came from countries in that area of the world. So a lot of times their English is not the best. So that's something to watch out for. Um, the other thing is threats and commands. Seldom will you get a legitimate letter that says, you must, if you don't, this will happen, okay? Generally those folks are a little bit better as far as trying to get you to do what you need to do. But so threats is something else. Also the information that they ask for, you should never get an email asking for anything. If you're uncomfortable on the phone in an email answering a question, don't do it. Just don't do it. Uh, a lot of times on the bottom, they'll sign it with no contact information. And a lot of times they even actually accidentally leave the wrong signature in there, okay? So these are all things you can kind of look for uh, when you get those emails. Something will pop up to you. Uh, and like I said before, if it doesn't look legit, you're not expecting it, delete it. So sometimes we have to take a look at the link and the way you can do that is by hovering over it. Yes, sir? I'm sorry, you said deleting it. I was told that you see an email that you don't recognize that it's better to just label it as junk and not delete So the thing about labeling it as junk, good, good point. All right, so think about this. A person has no vested interest in that email address. They're not going to use that email address twice. They'll create another email address and do the same thing again. You labeling it as junk, all you're kind of doing is tying up your program to look for that every time an email comes in. See what I mean? They're not going to use the same one twice. So Barawa does a lot more than that. So anybody that's into Barawa and looks at Barawa, and by the way, there's a, uh, a very good um, knowledge base article on uh, the Change Gear site. Uh, Barawa actually does more than that. When you right click it, it actually looks at the domain where it's really from not just the email address up top. You ever get a link from somebody and it says, hey, if you want more information, click here, and the here is a link? Here's not really the link. Underneath it lies the real information. That's what Barrowwood does. I'll probably get to you later on. Okay. When I first started working here, I had a uh, former co-employee that uh, spammed my email. And I've been setting up rules in Barrowwood and if you, if you know it's a real person, then that's, that's a different animal than phishing or, or some of these other types of cyber attacks. But, but the whole thing is, is I'm still having to deal with, you know, moving that every day. I have to move everything to borrow But I've set a rule on it that says, you know, I don't want things to be here crimes or LBGT living. Or, or right. <laughs> well, let's talk about that after this. Or even the service desk at 1111 can log on with you and kind of walk through that. Okay, but we'll talk about that. Uh, anyway, when you hover over one of these links, that gives you an idea of what that place really is. So if you recognize the website, the first part of that website, then you're probably pretty good. This is nsit.gov. I know what that website is. It's a national site about cybersecurity. So that may not be the best example for you guys, but I know what this is, so I feel comfortable with that. Um, and other ones you kind of kind of trust a little bit www.sec.gov investor. I don't know what that is. I'm going to probably Google that and see if that's something that I need to really click on and go to. Or it's something that's really bad. A good example is when you have, you might not be able to see that from back there, but it's a, it's a foreign domain. Okay. Our rules and regulations and laws that we have about 
uh, internet stuff is really kind of applies to us. It's hard to get laws enforced in other countries. And so that way, you kind of need to know where it's coming from. So if you hover over links, you'll be able to see some of that information, and that'll let you know if it's a good thing to do or not. Uh, so here's a little quiz, and I don't think, I don't know how many people can really see that, but here's a quiz. It is an email from American Express, and the email address is americanexpress at welcome.aexp.com. How many people think that's a good email address? Okay, good. So that's the first clue there. Um, we go down a little bit further. We read the message, and it says cardholder. That's another one. They will address you by name most of the time if it is a real email from a real company. Okay. Uh, for your security, we regularly monitor accounts for possible fraudulent activity. Please review the attempted charge below, which occurred within minutes of the timestamp on this message. And then there's a Hilton reservation for 1178.75. And then please verify these charges at this secure online chat. Okay, this is one of the ones that doesn't link. Like I said, this is not mine. Uh, but anyway, it says, uh, if we've already spoken to you, no matter disregard this message, they want you to click there and log in. Uh, and there's all kind of important stuff below. So what do we think about this message? Good or bad? Bad, bad message. Okay, I agree. That's a bad message. Uh, here's another one. This one's from PayPal. Uh, this one says, due to concerns for the safety and integrity of the PayPal account, the PayPal account, Okay, they start off by saying, dear PayPal member, not really your name. It has come to our attention, yada, 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 yada. <coughs> the last sentence says, this notification expires on 48. I don't think that's a real email already, just from that. We don't even really have the header up top. And then when we look at the address, it is a 66.160.154.156. You don't have to know what those numbers mean. You just need to know that probably if you hover over something and there's numbers, it's probably not real. Okay? Anybody can create a folder at the end called Catalog and PayPal. And again, that just kind of tries to fool you a little bit into thinking that's a real message. I don't think that's a good message. So we move away from that to a whole different subject with not a good transition. Typo squatting is another thing that happens out there. Anybody ever actually accidentally type in goggle.com, mm -hmm. something like that, and you go to a website. You go, well, this is pretty cool. They put a website up here. A lot of those can be nefarious. And so what people do is they go out and they, they reserve those domains, okay? Sometimes the company that, uh, like Google would actually kind of go out and buy those things up to kind of protect you from that, but a lot of times that's not the case. So what happens is sometimes they double up characters, all right, because you push a button twice sometimes, or they swap a character out that's nearby, like the E and the W on your keyboard. Um, a lot of times they'll misspell it, just swap a couple of letters at the end. I do that all the time when I'm typing. I'm thinking faster than I'm typing, so I, I end up doing that. They drop a letter or they put the dot in the wrong place. Or there's some things you really can't see. Does everybody see that Bank of America uh, link there? That actually says Bank of Arnerica. It's A R N not AM. That's really hard to see on your phone. Okay? When you get vision like mine and get my age, it's hard to see on your computer. But that's another way that people do it. That's called typo squatting. So be real careful whenever you're typing things in. Um, like we're talking about fake domains. So if you get an email and there's a domain on there and you click that domain and it's got to be real because they have a, a website. You know, not everybody has a website. This just lets you know for 11 bucks, for 12 bucks, I can have online banking dash dash at wellsfargo.com. I can buy that for 12 bucks and start scanning people. For $18, I can get all these different variations, .net, .org. So it's not really costly for people to do that. The way that those phishing scams kind of work, we talked about this earlier, is that two people won't do it but somebody will do it. Did anybody get an email last week from Kent Fuchs? We got an email from Kent Fuchs? We got 2,100 emails from Kent Fuchs. I'm letting the cat out of the bag. 200 people clicked on the link. 30 people put information in. 
Okay? It doesn't take that many folks really to get that get any kind of information out there. So I think this is the first group I told that to. We're gonna we're gonna announce this next week. But yeah. Um, 30 people. Uh, spear fishing is whenever somebody gets attacked individually. Like before we talked about fishing, wide open fishing, I get that information. Uh, Larry gave me some information, now I'm going to work, and I'm going to just dig right in on Larry. I'm going to get into his Facebook if I can, and Instagram, whatever type of social media you have, I'm going to start looking at his folks in there. Just focus all my attempts on Larry. So if he answered that first email, he's probably going to answer some other ones. Okay? So that's an idea about spirit fishing. That's a step after fishing when that happens. Very targeted. Executive whaling is a big one. Executive whaling is when they aim for somebody that's very high in the organization so they can get information not necessarily from them but from all of us that work for them. Anybody ever get the email or see the text that's going around about from Ed? And they said, hey, Kirk, I'm in a meeting. And I can't get out of this meeting, but I need three gift cards for this meeting. Can you please go and purchase these gift cards and text me back at this number, which wasn't Ed's number, when you get those gift cards? Of course, the answer is no, right? You should never do that. But if I had done that, the next part would have been, I can't really be interrupted right now, so go ahead and activate those gift cards, scratch off the number on the back, and text me those numbers. By doing that, I've given them access to that money. They can just transfer it right into their thing. Another thing about executive whaling, Maybe I do get Ed's Facebook account, okay? And I'm following his Facebook account. And I see he's boarding a plane to go somewhere. And I know he's gonna be out of pocket, out of communication for three, four, six hours. That's when the spear phishing starts and all the people that are associated with Ed start getting emails and texts. Hey, I'm on a plane, I can't answer back. I need for you to transfer this money. That's called the executive way. That happens a lot out in the world. Um, I don't know the specifics, but there was a CEO for a big company. He got on a plane from like Germany to America. He's in the air for like seven hours, eight hours, something like that. His top accountant got an email with a code and transferred money. Right out of the company into that guy's bank account. Everything was closed up after that, they lost money. So that's just another term we wanna make you aware of. Um, voice phishing, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, you have to be aware of those utility imposters. Uh, we have emails that go out from time to time to our customers where we tell them we are not doing this particular practice to get your money. A lot of times it's phone scams. What are they doing? They're threatening people. We're going to turn off their utilities. What do they have to do? Everything but come downtown and pay your bill. Okay. Uh, my brother has uh, two companies in Gainesville. He's got a place over at uh, West Newberry Road. He only has it for a storefront because he doesn't work out of that. He works out of his vehicle. Um, he might be a little haphazard sometime with paying his bill. So he gets a phone call from customer service at GRU. Your bill is okay. Oh, I'm sorry. What do I need to do? You need to come right now and pay it. We've got somebody on the way to turn your power off today. He's not as in tune with the practices of GRU as I am. So he was worried that he's going to lose his power for his business. Okay, I can't make it in there today. What can I do? Well, the only other thing you can do is go buy this gift card at CBS, activate it, and give me that number. And the person was very rude on the phone. So he calls me complaining about GRU. He hadn't done it yet. He's on his way to do it. He calls me complaining about GRU. And while he's telling the story, I'm like, I know he doesn't perhaps pay his bill on time like he should. But on the other hand, that doesn't sound like our customer service, okay? Nothing like what you would normally get from them. And so I said, have you called them? He says, yeah, I called the guy back twice. And I said, no, hang the phone up, call this number. This is the real number. He called there, <laughs> nothing to do with him. Total scam, 100% beginning to end. You know, that happens. So we've got to be aware of that too. And again, older people. They get older people on those type of scams. Uh, SMS, short message system on your phone. I don't know, I get a billion texts that's not for me. 
I don't know who Megan is or Paul is, but they get a bunch of offers from places on my phone. So that's something else to be aware of. That's really hard for older people to understand also, that that is another avenue they can get to you. Uh, you click on your phone, your phone could very well download something that you don't really know that it downloaded. You take your phone at home, you're gonna charge it, you're gonna hook it up to your computer to get pictures off of it, something like that. You've just infected your computer, or you can infect your computer that way. This is a huge carrier for PC viruses that don't really affect your phone because the format's wrong, but it'll affect your computer, okay? Plugging your phone up to your computer, not a very good thing to do. Anybody notice anything about this uh, company? Marcy's. Marcy's. Marcy's.com, not Macy's, but Marcy's. So that's another little, another little hint there. So would anybody mail a bag full of cash wide open like that? Probably not. I'm scared to send a card sometimes, you know, with a check in it or, or money for a birthday or something like that. I wouldn't send that. Uh, well, when we send email, now I'm going to throw in a little caveat here. If you go to office.com and you use that Outlook link on there and you email somebody and they choose to get that by going to their office.com and using that, that is encrypted. But if you use that desktop Outlook that you have, it's not encrypted. Now we're in a pretty safe environment. We got key cards to get in, and everybody can see from the email I sent out yesterday with that picture, nobody leaves their key card laying around on their desk or anything like that. So we're a little bit safer, but a lot of times that information that goes from your PC or your laptop or your phone, that's not encrypted. If you ever use public Wi-Fi at the library, at the airport, at a hotel, that's not encrypted. Somebody could be sitting there, Boris could have his black van, <coughs> with all those antennas parked outside, they could be watching your traffic as it goes back and forth. That's very doable. Uh, Walt tells a story about a conference he was at, and at that conference, um, I forget the guy's name right now, it wouldn't matter, um, he was an expert hacker. He had somebody that has done this. I think, Darko, you might have sent me a, um, a news article about this. But what the guy did was he got there the day before, and he took a bunch of these really cool looking thumb drives and he put a virus on them. And then he went out in the parking lot and he just scattered them. And that night as people were getting there, they were like, oh, what is this? These are cybersecurity folks, uh, IT folks. And they took all these and a lot of them went back to their room. And in the middle of the guy's presentation the next day, like IT people do, we break out our laptop, we start you know, multitasking. And all of a sudden he stops what he's doing and he puts his laptop screen up on the board and he clicks a button and it's your laptop. And what you're doing, and then your laptop, and then your laptop. So that information is not encrypted, and it just takes a very little bit of information before they can open that up and get there. Um, so whenever we're emailing stuff back and forth, we should never include this information ever. Any of that personal information there, we should never include that. Social security number, credit card numbers, birth dates, employees, other confidential data. There are people that write programs that scan emails through public records or whatever they can get a hold of and they're looking for any 16 digit number. Why would they be looking for a 16 digit number? Credit card. Okay, so that's the first step of getting that access. Um, so if you ever receive an email from eBay or PayPal and they ask for any of that following information, it is probably a fraud. Not just eBay or PayPal, but from anybody. Any of that information there, bank account, credit card or debit information, driver's license information, email addresses, pins or passwords, or your full name. And if you just give them a little bit of information, they might already have something on you already for that other piece of information. So a lot of times we use one email address and one password for everything we do online, right? We use an email address and our super secret password that only we know and we use that for everything that we do. Our Gmail, Yahoo, Facebook, PayPal, eBay, you name it, we use that same combination because we don't want to remember 15 passwords. If a hacker gets that information, do you think they're gonna stop there or do you think they're gonna to go to ebay.com and see if that works there? Okay, eBay is tied to your bank account or to your PayPal or your bank account. 
So they will keep going. If you use the same username and password multiple places, think about that. Do you really want to give them the keys to the kingdom for just a little bit of effort on their part? Uh, we're getting toward the end here. There's a couple of things we can look for when we go to a website. First thing is we should always type in that address ourselves. We should never really use the link that somebody gives us. If it has that S at the end of the HTTP, that's a good sign that it's a secure website. The other thing we should always look for over here is this little lock. So that's two good indicators that you're in a safe place when you go there. If your Windows is not up to date and your browser is not up to date, you may not get the right information back there. Updates are very important. Okay, make sure you're all the way updated on your devices. If you ever do get a window like this while you're at work, you can feel pretty comfortable that as long as it doesn't say normal.com, if it says <laughs> gruadmin.com or gg or something along those lines, you can feel pretty safe and secure about that. Uh, usually right there where it says domain, it says grew admin or GG, uh, feel comfortable about that. If you get this one time, you put your information in, you press enter to get it again, you're probably not going nowhere because there's something else wrong there. So don't keep putting it in, you got another problem, you might need to reboot, call the service desk, something like that. Also, if you see this uh, page, you're pretty safe. Uh, this is the page that normally gets you to office.com. Okay, so you will get prompted there a lot of times. If you've changed your password in the system, you might get that on your phone or at your home computer, you know, those are perfectly okay to put in. So keep those in mind. Um, be, be suspicious of unsolicited phone calls, emails, or visits from individuals asking about internal information. Uh, we get a lot of sales calls in IT, and a lot of these places are server places or network places or security places. And the first thing they ask you is, tell me a little bit about your network. And of course, the answer to that is no. Okay, and we're in a utility business. Okay, so we have a lot of different ways that we could be compromised or we could hurt people. So we want to be very careful about that information. Everybody should be real guarded about the information that they share out with folks. And of course, the personal information is important, but also information about the company. We also don't want to email stuff that might have some company information in there that once it's out, you can't get it back. Okay, what, you're, what, you're, what you tell your kids is, don't put nothing on the internet because it stays out there forever, that's true. And the same thing about this information, we can't get it back. As a, as a side note from that, be careful about when you deal with city commissioners because their emails are posted on the web, okay? And we've had several times when something got sent to them and they posted it and it probably shouldn't have been. Even though we can hop out there and get that stuff pulled off the web, there's people who already have a copy. They already have that thing locked up and they're ready to start using it. Okay, so the question you can ask yourself when an email comes in, is it legitimate? Is this an email that you expected to get? I told Victoria this the other day and then I sent an email saying, look at this picture and tell me all the things you find wrong. And she asked me, I wasn't expecting this. So, should I, so she was getting me back on my own information. And so I said, because she made fun of me, I'd pick on her in the class. That's what I'm doing. So is it really expected? A lot of times are you expecting this information? Do you normally get emails from folks saying, hey, here's that file you wanted, click this Dropbox link to get that file? Or have you already kind of talked to that person ahead of time to make sure that's true? Uh, if that's the case and you're not really sure about it, could be, may not be, don't do it. Call them up on the phone, find out if that's really what they want, email them separately, you know, do something like that. Nothing wrong with that, good business. If it's urgent or too good to be true, it is probably a fake email. If you win the Russian lottery and they call you on the, uh, they send you an email saying you won the Russian lottery <laughs> and you didn't buy a ticket for the Russian lottery, that is probably fake. Okay? So it's too good to be true. So don't believe that. If they're asking for personal information, I said that over and over again. If you notice, I've probably said that about five times today. Why have I said that? Because that's how we, we give up the ghost. Everybody gives, not everybody. The people that get hacked give up that information. And that's the first clue right there we shouldn't give. If it's got a weird looking attachment on it and you weren't expecting that attachment, don't open that email. Certainly don't click on that attachment. And by hovering over it and looking at those URLs, that can give you an idea if that is a real website or if it's legitimate, uh, uh, not real. Um, 
hover over the link, see what it says. Just because it has a logo, does that mean it's real? No. no. Um, incorrect grammar and spelling, those are other things. What we've done is we've slipped into the summary here, and I wasn't quite ready for it, but this is the summary. Also, uh, you know, plain text typing sometimes uh, in an email can kind of lead you to be a little bit suspicious of that. A lot of times it might be a better font or a better looking email. So if you get something and it looks like somebody typed it on a notepad and then cut and pasted it into an email, be aware of that. Uh, if the message of the body, you know, you have your address up top, you have your subject, and then you have that body of the message. If that's a picture, mm, be careful. If it's an image, be careful. You can click on that and it can take you to a website. So be careful about those kind of things. Don't click on links and don't open files. Questions? say this is a real email address and that goes into another database that they can sell off or share with folks that unsubscribe at the bottom is probably not a good thing to do same thing like if you get a text message you click one to stop not a good thing to do that just lets people know that's a real person there so we say you know delete that email or don't answer that phone number and then after a while you'll drop off the radar for that particular one so I would say no I set up a rule when I get common ones like that. I set up a rule, they all go to one place. I can do a real quick scan and see if anything I'm interested in. And if not, I just delete the whole list. Anybody else? Yes. Yes. HTTPS. Was this ever? HTTPS? Sure, could be. Um, you know, the thing about this, folks, is we can never be 100% sure, okay? Until after the event. But if you go to a site, if you type in www.paypal.com and there's no S, I'd stop. Same thing for your banking stuff, all of that. Um, so I, that, that's what I'd say. I don't know if it can be or not. I'm not going to say it can't because I want people to be careful of that. So watch out for that S, watch out for that lock. Anybody else? Okay, great. If you do have a question you don't want to ask it out loud, hang around, and we can talk about that. Uh, this afternoon, there's another one of these that's a little bit different. Um, if you have a chance to come back, please, by all means, come back. If you have people you work with uh, and they haven't made it to one yet, ask them to come over here this afternoon. We can talk about that. Uh, we should have emails coming out from Walt every day with different pieces of information. This is a prep to get us ready for the month of October. I thank you, each and every one of you, for coming out today. Thank you very much.
what happens for that is what we will see. And also another one that needs to stop. But that's the we don't know. So they send out a million emails. Let's say 750,000 barrels of oil. Everybody in the stop. They know this is a live person I am on the internet.
things out no, probably a little like later. I asked the like, person who told me to answer the question. I called them, they said, no, we can do something about that. That was the first I'd ever got something that had words because I've seen numbers, you know, phone numbers have gone out, right, but I've never had it come out as content. Yeah, so that was really strange. So they're getting creative. Good luck on the content. We got, we got, um, Go ahead. Sherry, this is Kirk. Hi, Sherry. Nice to see you again. We want to hear your answer, so we're sticking with Seven. It's always safe. <laughs> so, um, the berry pot, yes. you know, the baking, you know, sure. whatever that's going around, um, I didn't realize. It. So, I, because I am a member of the berry pot, so it was like, it's like, this is my personal shop. Sure. So it's like a legit email logo of the whole business. So, it says something like, um, you have so many points to reserve your point. So they got that, and you know, they, uh, um, I don't know if they got any information from your click. The other thing about a lot of hackers, some are really great, and some are probably idiots. So they don't set stuff up and work goes through. I would think if you put your username and password on there, it should have taken you at least to another step, because now they have that little bit of information they want to do. My bank, if I can go to my bank and use my username and password to log on, the next thing I have to enter is a pen, and then. It's not from my the computer that I usually connect because with. They, they ask me one of my security it questions, and it's, it's it rolls. It's random. Sure. It's from so there's like three or four questions they have. But um, I think it's a good sign they hotmail sure, yeah. set down. Yeah. 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 Yeah
said, don't worry about it. There's nothing probably got out. I'd still do whatever else you could. Right. Just put it down. Yeah. Now, in this process, I'm going to because I kind of want to That's why they were trying to get me to the email. Uh, uh, so now what I don't think they should really have to worry about now if that's the case is that the mayor got information. I don't know what else is in there. Sometimes it can be questions in there like, do you want to reset your password? What's your mother's name? What's your best friend's name? Did you go to high school? So now that might be it. I don't even know what you want to Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see a commercial now that's got this lady. Shop, hotel, we just stay out of hand. Again, 
But now we'll start looking at like this. And it's so nice. And that's the brand spanking new micro tail suite is 89 bucks a week. Why are we have this brand loyalty for something that costs that much money? So you can get a free night every so often or a free upgrade. But, um, it just didn't seem like those, those kind of deals were big deals. So since they use Austin, they don't understand. So is your is your password so your number for getting into your Marriott account is that password the same password for your email address? Um, so it was, okay, then that's good. But if it was, and see, I, if it was, then yes, they've got a combination now. They can trust me in different places. Yep. So if I need to win and change the password, yep. should it be? So once they get after, once they get access to your email address, then they'll hit all those signs so that those that uh, fail one time, and then they'll click reset my password. So then you get a link sent to your mailbox, which they now can look at, and they'll click on that link and go there and try it from there. And then you know your password, your new password, so they can get access to that account. But I also, who gets it first? Right, who gets it first? But I would know that they were messing around somewhere else. Right. So, but if they did that and they got an immediate email, and as soon as they got the email, they followed it, deleted the email, then you might get something that pops up on their phone, or home scene, you got the email, so just go there and it's not there. I would definitely say if you have that same password and use my phone, go to your email. And we can never do a plan to save this we can certainly do all those steps. So what do they do? Go in and like file and then like uh, try to get her refund sent to them or something like that? Yes. I did her with that. So when I went in and did her taxes, and they may even need to see people in that. Just up I got sent to the back saying, Well, I'm glad they have a manner 
a method but the place to kind of protect those people from future things and to make sure that they get credit for the right thing. sharing a real world and yeah. 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 all yeah. of this stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just adding a few Well, I hope nothing comes of that, but I, I will share that. And then the, um, that uh, email
Certainly, I will certainly, I'd love to come do that.